Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Have you noticed Ripple did remove reference to XRP from their cross-border payment section of their website? Guys, this is coming from Jungle Inc. here. I did not notice this. Send cross-border payments in real time. Uh, before, apparently, Ripple did have a uh, reference to XRP here. Jungle does have this here listed as uh, how it used to look. For reference, this is how it used to look here. There was the XRP logo, and uh, apparently now they have removed XRP from their uh, from their website, this is uh, from the Wayback Machine. It was just from back in uh, in January of 2024. Was uh, the last time we did see XRP listed in the payments section. Um, so XRP Highlander did dig into this. It's in the payments video at the bottom of the page. Also, all over other sections of the website. So for those of you guys wondering if uh, you know they're they're looking to distance themselves from XRP. Uh, chances are that is uh, not the case, especially considering they've uh, you know even gone on the record and said. We are still committed to XRP. They were talking about that in relation to uh, the RLUSD. So here's what XRP Highlander did point out. The first use case we tackled was cross-border payments, leveraging the XRP ledger and its native digital asset token XRP. So you guys can see here a specific mention of XRP. Uh, the XRPL is the blockchain of choice for institutional DeFi use cases due to its reliability, high performance, low transaction costs, and speed. If you guys take a look down here, uh, it says XRP is still the universal bridge asset for the XRP ledger and is especially useful to create liquidity for long tail assets. So there they specifically are stating XRP utilized for, uh, for liquidity, of course. They give another example here in regions where the cost to move money across borders is particularly high due to the lack of liquidity between currencies. XRP remains the most efficient cryptocurrency. So the XRP ledger is built for business. Then they give uh, a, a, just a description of that. Uh, and here, guys, the digital asset real world utility for XRP. Jungling just saying, you know, yeah, but they did remove it from their payment section of the website, maybe due to the ruling on ODL transactions. I don't know. I just noticed Draconian Owl here saying, you know, I think you're looking for something that isn't there. Jungle Link did respond. It was there. I'm not saying it's bad that it's disappeared. It's just that it has changed. So, uh, you know, sometimes these companies, they just revamp their website and, uh, you know, they try to kind of streamline them to just, uh, I guess, attract more business. And, you know, XRP has been controversial, I got to say, over the last several years because of the SEC lawsuit. So maybe, you know, even though they haven't, uh, you know, changed how their plans are um, going to be moving forward for XRP. They maybe uh, just wanted to remove it, uh, you know, for businesses, for uh, big banks, organizations, governments, so that they don't just automatically assume that this company is XRP centric. I mean, as of the time of this recording, XRP is still just trading in the spec space at 55 cents per coin. Nothing new there. I mean, I'm hoping we are going to see a burst of activity over quarter four of 2024. Guys, we've got one month to go. If you guys didn't catch the video I did this morning, I talk about uh, while well, the bull run continuing its ascent by quarter four of 2024. And as money moves into the crypto space, guys, we are going to see these real world assets uh, really attract the dollars, the money that is uh, ultimately going to translate into turning these cryptocurrencies into problem solving solutions. So that is uh, the real world utility aspect to it. I think, though, in the meantime, we should be very excited about this bull run, especially if it does start kicking off in October. For more information on what I'm doing, my plan, cash out strategy, all that fun stuff, you can find that at patreon.com slash working money channel. I mean, the build out is one of those things that uh, I think is going to take time. And I feel like, you know, already being in this space for quite a while, I feel like it's just dragging and dragging and dragging. Mr. Man here pointing this out, though, Giancarlo Former CFTC chairman explains what the internet boom was like in the year 2000 and what's taking this bull run so long. Guys, the infrastructure needs time to be set up. Listen to this. Let me jump in here too. Uh, you know, we talk about time of these things. I've often heard people say, well, you know, when's it going to happen as if, you know, as if we've been waiting a lifetime. There's a very good historical analogy. In, in 2000, we had something called the dot-com crash and Time Magazine ran an article re referring to a uh, a, an e-commerce site called Pets.com, and they called it uh, Pets.bomb, and mocked the whole notion of e-commerce. E e the fact of the matter is, e-commerce really started coming in the, in the 19, late 1990s, and it did, in fact, crash in 2000. The time of Pets.com's crash, there was about 350 million users worldwide of e-commerce. The truth is, though, that Pets.com did not fail because people didn't want to buy pet supplies on, online. It failed because they didn't want to do it using dial-up modems. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to do it having to put their credit card information into some dodgy website. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want to wait three weeks for the, for the uh, pet supplies to arrive. 
it took the build out of, um, of, of, of four G technology. It took the build out of PayPal. It took the build out of AWS delivery and, and same day delivery services for e-commerce to become a reality. By 2010, that 350 million users of e-commerce became 2 billion. And by 2020, as we're going into the um, the, lock, the COVID lockdown, it was close to 5 billion. Today, it's about 7 billion people today yeah. using e-commerce. So looking back, it all seems logical. We all use e-commerce now, but 20 years ago, people were questioning its very premise. Infrastructure takes time to build. The concept is often sold ahead of the infrastructure build out. But what we're talking about here with Canton is infrastructure that's, infrastructure that's ready to go and be built on today. And you're going to see this happen. The direction is set, but sometimes it does take a little bit of time. One can only imagine how uh, the future is going to look, not just for, uh, well, cryptocurrency utility, but uh, you know many other technologies that are already being promised today. I just wanted to bring up Apple stock here just to give you guys uh, maybe a bit of an insight as to how long it actually took before Apple really did come into its own. Now, the infrastructure wasn't there yet. I mean, Apple had their computers, of course. But guys, look at this chart from the early 80s, okay, when Apple stock was trading under a dollar. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't actually see uh, a lot of movement for Apple up until 2003. And you know what this was? This was the invention of the iPod, okay? MP3s existed all in here. But the invention of the iPod and that rollout really is what took the popularity soaring. So uh, again, just kind of a maybe, I guess, maybe a mini example of the infrastructure needing to be built out before we really start to see the adoption. And guys, with the adoption, look what came with the adoption. Price accumulation going gangbusters from 2003 here. Let's take a look. So this is the Apple chart on the weekly. From 2003 up until today... We are looking at almost 100,000% in gains, 92, uh, 92,800% in gains. And uh, I think this stock has uh, also, I don't know if this is taking into account the stock splitting as well. So I uh, just kind of wanted to bring that up. You know, Chris Giancarlo does have a really good point here. Cryptocurrency is going to be doing the same kind of thing. When we talk about XRP getting up to three digits, four digits, five digits, that is not an insane prediction. I mean, it's it might be a little insane for the next year or two, but it is not an insane prediction if you do decide to hold. The long-term benefits could, in fact, set you and your family up for generations to come. So, uh, again, just a hypothesis here. Considering where we're seeing tokenization going, if you guys didn't catch this morning's video, I do suggest you watch it because uh, we're talking about trillions of dollars being tokenized, almost one quadrillion. OK, a lot of that money is going to go into cryptocurrencies. So I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Mann for posting that, guys. Another point that I wanted to mention here from Smoke, even JP Morgan foresees the decreasing use of Tether with this upcoming stablecoin regulation bill. Big statement from the top of the financial food chain. Regulations put indirect pressure on Tether's attractiveness. Uh, and this is how RLUSD, the Ripple stablecoin, will take over Tether's market share of stablecoins. RLUSD will be backed by a regulatory, or a, sorry, a regulated entity like Ripple and operate on its own blockchain, would be well positioned to capitalize on the shift in the market. With a high level of regulatory compliance, transparency, and adherence to new standards, the RLUSD will become more attractive to institutions and investors who are increasingly wary of Tether's opaque asset disclosures and weaker regulatory standing. So this also goes to the point of regulatory clarity and uh, how we're uh, slowly seeing the uh, the world become more regulated when it comes to cryptocurrency adoption. So upcoming stablecoin regulations in the US and Europe will impact Tether's usage. This guy's again coming from JP Morgan. So the biggest bank in the US, likely it's going to put indirect pressure on Tether and its attractiveness. Uh, of course, you know, that coin is not compliant with KYC and AML standards. This, ch uh, this challenge for, uh, uh, sorry, this challenge for Tether would also apply to the DeFi space where Tether is widely used as a source of collateral and liquidity. Tether's reports are still lacking a full and detailed asset breakdown and independent audits. Instead of auditors' assurances, there are significant price risks associated with the asset other than US T-bills. So, you know, if we are uh, looking to regulate stablecoins, and we are, I mean, there's the micro-regulations that are already being rolled out in Europe. That is also going to have an effect on Tether. Uh, Tether will continue to lose market dominance. Another one here from Smoke in a regulated stablecoin era. So USDT, on the other hand, appears to be playing coy with regulators' demands for full transparency in the way it manages its underlying assets. This might imply that USDT will continue to lose market share, market dominance, 
to regulated stable coins in the future. And guys, this is why Ripple has wanted to be, uh, you know, compliant and regulated moving forward with, uh, well, I mean, I guess they learned their lesson, a big lesson to learn with XRP, doing everything above board. And even at, uh, you know, even in 2017 and 2018, Ripple was thinking they were doing everything above board and then boom, the SEC comes down and sues them. So, you know, uh, being extra, extra, extra careful, I think with the RLUSD, um, but guys, that is a uh, going to be an example of a regulated stable coin that, th that we are going to see being used in a regulated market. Here's some more points on micro-regulation. In 2024, the stable coin market is predicted to reach a new record high, surpassing $200 billion. So guys, that is by the end of this year. Driven by the launch of market in crypto assets or MICA regulated stable coins in Europe, the growth of yielded uh, of yield bearing stable coins and rising trading volumes, USDC coin is expected to overtake Tether in market share, reflecting a growing institutional preference already seen on newer layer two chains. And then down here, it's uh, it's going to be about know your customer or KYC infractions and market manipulating affecting Tether's market position because Tether isn't uh, you know regulated in the same capacity now. Crypto Eddie has come out and said uh, that we in the West, we underestimate Tether and their uh, their ability to continue to thrive. Apparently in Asia, now I don't live there, I don't know too much about the Asian market specifically when it comes to uh, financial applications today. Apparently though, in Asia, they're already using Tether and uh, it doesn't look like they're going to stop. So that is an interesting perspective, you know, from a different uh, side of the world, literally, you know, a different, uh, I guess, kind of maybe philosophy when it comes to uh, regulation and, uh, and finance. You know, at a point in time, a lot of the countries around the world, they were on board, you know, one kind of method to regulate finance. And now guys, we're seeing a very fractured system. So this is beneficial for XRP holders because the agnostic cryptocurrency that does not uh, favor one jurisdiction over another, that can be used in a multitude of ways. I mean, I guess the only one that XRP does favor are XRP holders themselves, you and I guys. But anyway, just uh, giving you guys some more examples of uh, what we're seeing in terms of regulation. Now, I happen to see this too. Mpilotech achieves certification as a Temenos digital implementation partner for the MEA region. Temenos, of course, one of the large Ripple partners. Now, Mpilotech is excited to announce its certification in the Middle Eastern region with Temenos. This milestone marks a significant step in Mpilotech's mission to empower financial institutions with cutting edge digital banking solutions. The certification comes after rigorous evaluation, during which Mpilotech demonstrated its capabilities through a skilled team of 30 certified professionals, each specializing in various implementations and delivery disciplines. Uh, the company's proven alignment with the Temenos implementation methodology reinforces its commitment to delivering best practice solutions tailored to the unique needs of clients across the region. So big news there, guys, from Mpilotech partnering up with uh, a big Ripple partner, in this case, Temenos. Mpilotech is currently undertaking taking two pivotal implementations of uh, Temenos Digital on the African continent, including a prominent bank. Uh, so this is uh, Bank One Mauritius. These initiatives showcase the company's ability to drive digital transformation, enabling banks to enhance their customer experiences and streamline operations. So by having this certification, of course, this does uh, add more perks. It allows them to expand their business. This certification not only highlights our expertise in digital banking solutions, but also reflects our dedication to helping our clients navigate their digital transformation journeys successfully. This coming from the CEO of Mpilotech. We are committed to fostering innovation in the MIA region and ensuring that our clients can leverage the full potential of Temenos products. And of course, guys, Temenos, Ripple enabled, helping a lot of these uh, smaller companies get onto DLT platforms so that they can, in fact, expand their businesses in regions of the world where, uh, you know, these types of payments are, uh, are are more necessary than they are in liquid corridors like, uh, you know, US to Mexican corridor, just as one example there. But anyway, just wanted to bring that up. Uh, thought that was pretty interesting. Another Temenos partner too in the news, guys, Midwest One Bank has streamlined customer onboarding with Temenos. Temenos has announced that Midwest One Bank, a community bank headquartered in Iowa, has gone live with Temenos Digital Onboarding, leveraging Amazon Web Services. So AWS, uh, as we know, already connected to Ripple. I did uh, recently do a video on that, which I will link up here in the top right-hand corner. The SAAS solution 
was implemented for Midwest One by RCG Global Services, a Temenos delivery partner in North America. So guys, this bringing it home to the United States, this strategic move enables Midwest One to enhance customer acquisition and retention through digital channels on a resilient, scalable platform. Midwest One is using Temenos digital onboarding to streamline their customer onboarding process in order to meet customer expectations for fast, frictionless digital experiences while enhancing operational efficiency. Customers can now complete an application in an average of two minutes. So if you want to uh, onboard with this new product and you are a, a company that is uh, looking to do that, you can do that with, uh, I guess, this application. So guys, Temenos onboarding many different uh, banks, and I'm starting to see that it is becoming more prevalent for Temenos to uh, you know, start to onboard, I guess, at the beginning, it was the larger banks, then the mid-sized banks. Now that the, uh, you know, now that uh, I guess the, the a lot of the the bulk of the legwork is done. Now moving on to smaller banks, because at the end of the day, you know, if you want to survive. I'm sure a lot of these banks, you know, maybe they did not have the uh, the budget to integrate at the beginning. And, uh, you know, maybe some of the, I mean, even even the, the big banks didn't want to, uh, you know, spend the money at the beginning. But now that DLT solutions are becoming the norm, and I'm sure that because uh, these, sedu- uh, these solutions are becoming a lot more prevalent, the prices have probably come down. Or, you know, companies like Ripple or, uh, you know, their partners like Temenos, they probably scale to uh, just depending on a bank's budget because everybody at the end of the day does need to get onto DLT solutions. And so, you know, it seems like every single day we're seeing Ripple connected companies continue to partner up with, uh, you know, many, many, many different banks globally. So just wanted to keep moving along here. Mike Manfield bringing this to our attention through blockchain technology. Ripple enables global financial institutions, businesses, governments, and developers to move, manage, and tokenize value, guys. This is another partnership here with Red Hat. The other day, I also did talk about uh, another partnership with Red Hat. Well, here, guys, Nationwide Building Society has built a new business integration platform utilizing Red Hat OpenShift to achieve service availability of 99.999 and faster development of upgrades and launches. Just to give it some more context here, uh, we do have from the Red Hat ecosystem catalog, they do have uh, in their partners... Uh, section of their website, they do have Ripple here, building the internet of value, enabling the world to move value uh, the way information moves today. So a confirmed Ripple partner directly from Red Hat's website. And now Red Hat and OpenShift are partnering up in order to better support increasing customer digital demands. Nationwide wanted to build an event-driven integration platform that could better manage its system architecture, scale responsively when needed, and bridge to modern cloud-native applications. The first step was creating a new platform named Speed layer using open hybrid cloud technologies and Red Hat OpenShift and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, Speed layer was built to gather accurate real-time data to enable the business to respond to events as they occur. Uh, it has now been adopted as the foundation for strategic operations throughout the organization. So another Ripple partner here partnering up with uh, this company here nationwide is able to harness open source technology such as Kafka, uh, for distributed event storage and stream processing uh, and Mo- uh, MongoDB for database management to help support ongoing service access during outages. So it's looking as though this is for data storage here, guys. The platform can now dynamically upgrade or launch new capabilities for building society uh, and customers can continue to use service during outages planned or otherwise. So uh, another application here that uh, is likely going to be uh, developed on the blockchain. We already know that uh, Ripple has partnered with uh, companies like AWS, and there is that uh, confirmed partnership with Red Hat too. It's funny, I just heard about this, uh, this company the other day, and uh, now I'm hearing about them today again. And uh, sure enough, I did a little bit of research here and did find that, uh, of course, Ripple is uh, listed right there on their website. So uh, some more great news from a couple of Ripple partners here. Wanted to thank Mike Manfield for pointing that out. A few other things just from that article that uh, Mike did point out here as digital requirements continue to evolve, uh, whether volume or of payments, banking app users, regulation or system scalability, we have to be prepared for the yet unknown demands and channels. So uh, this kind of speaks to that fact that there are going to be many use cases, many of which that we don't even that we can't even fathom yet, I guess. Uh, and we just have to be prepared, right? A DLT solution provider like Ripple can help companies like this do that. So uh, again, wanted just to thank Mike for posting that. Guys, as we're moving into the future of finance, I know the speculation keeps ramping up and even Amelie here noticing this. Wow, look what crypto exchange Gemini just posted. XRP with the X from the X platform and this directly from Gemini. Is it a hint of something? Will Elon Musk 
integrate XRP into X payments. Now, I've talked about uh, this concept in the past and Elon Musk's connection with Ripple and XRP. I will link uh, a recent video I did about that up here. It is all just speculation at this point. But the one thing I did find interesting was this, guys, courtesy of Anders on Twitter. Look at all the representatives from major US crypto exchanges that are now attending Swell in Miami this coming fall, 2024, guys. One of those crypto exchanges of course, is Gemini. Now, we also have Coinbase and Kraken. So uh, Philip Martin from Coinbase is going to be there. We also have Nick Percocho from Kraken. But guys, Brittany McClary, head of trust and safety at Gemini, is also going to be attending Ripple Swell event 2024. Two chief security officers and one head of trust and safety, and that is the Gemini representative. Makes sense now that XRP has received regulatory clarity in the United States hoping for some sort of collaboration with U.S. exchanges coming up in the future sometime. ODL using XRP should be possible in the U.S. now as long as the XRP is not sourced from Ripple but from an exchange other than just using RLUSD. So guys, are we seeing something perhaps connecting Gemini going to be present at Swell? Gemini also posting this and uh, some were wondering if that tweet was real or not. Yeah, it's real. I'm going to click on it right now. There it is. Gemini XRP. Is this the beginning of crypto payments over social media platforms in the mainstream? I don't know. I'm getting really excited. This anticipation is killing me, guys. That's just my opinion. But I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.